enzymes basically digested all the proteins, all the muscle that you have in the heart. So at the end, you are left with just the, the connective tissue of the heart, the collagen of the heart. You know, all your tissues in your body, they all have a soft skeleton. All your cells of your liver, of your lung, everything, they're hanging to sort of a, a soft skeleton, a, a matrix if you want. That's a matrix of collagen. So that's what the heart is once you have digested all the muscle tissue. But the tissue still retains the signature that this was the heart. So she later laid out the stem cells that she removed before. She basically laid them out on the soft skeleton and within a matter of a week or two, you have a beating heart in a test tube. Just wrap your mind around this. There is even, although they did it, we still don't fully understand how it's happening. What I mean is that you just put stem cells on a heart tissue. The stem cells recognize that, that is the, it's, it's, it's the heart. So they transform into heart cell. But they did not just transform into heart cells. They transform into heart cells that organize themselves in the shape of a heart, all coordinated to beat together like a heart. That level of, of, of reconstruction, that is not understood. We don't know how this is happening. But if we, I'm showing this to you just to, to have in mind that when we talk, if I were to ask you, we have now a way of building a new tissue in the lab and we're going to give you that new tissue. You would think that this is science fiction. It's not something that we can do today. So I want to show you this video to realize how advanced and how powerful the science is and how powerful your stem cells are. These stem cells are right now in your body. This is bringing a huge paradigm clash, if you want, be between the old model and the new model. So if I take what we have right now and I kind of push this in the future, let's look at what we have in the future, let's say five years from now. I think that when you go and see your doctor, you will first and foremost look at your stem cells. What strategy can we do to repair? Is there a way to put more stem cells in circulation? Can we extract stem cells, do something with them? In the future, not too distant future, stem cells will be part of every single medical approach to deal with a problem. There is also a science that is emerging, uh, the science of markers. You may have read about it. There are a whole slew of markers that are being developed to evaluate where you are in your aging process. Markers about youth, markers about loss of youth. You may have heard some of them, for example, DNA methylation in, the, in, 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 your, uh, in your chromosome. More DNA is methylated in specific areas and it corresponds to what they refer to as biological age. I'm sure you've heard of that. There are many of these markers that are being developed, but again, let's push in five years from now, I believe that one of the most important markers that we will have is the number of stem cells that you have in your body. There's a direct link between how many stem cells that you have and your ability to repair. When you see two people with the same broken bone, they don't repair necessarily with the same effectiveness and with the same speed. The one that heals the best has more stem cells in his, in his circulation. If you look at the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of people who have developed various kinds of age-related diseases, you will find less than half the number that you found in people of the same age that are healthy. There's a direct link between how many stem cells you have today in your bloodstream and what your health will be in 5, 10, and 15 years from now. But if we don't have a ways of counting the number of stem cells in your blood, if today you go and see your doctor and ask him, how many stem cells do you have in my blood? There's no, there's a method to quantify them, but that machine, you will not find it at your doctor's office. So I'm working with companies right now to develop a small device, and health device, that you can have in any doctor's office, take a small, small prick of your finger, take a drop of blood, and they can quantify how many stem cells you have in your blood. I'm working on a book right now to do a review of the scientific literature to basically establish with all the, the available scientific literature, what is the number of stem cells in your blood? That is the threshold. Like if you are below this number, that means that you are at, at risk 
of being all these people who have developed various kinds of age-related diseases. So let's push this, let's say three to five years down the road, you go see your doctor, he counts the number of stem cells in your bloodstream, and he can basically tell you, here's what your future looks like. The, what is beautiful with this is that the marker is a functional marker. What I mean is that if we see that you have too few stem cells in your bloodstream, we can put more. And when we can put more, then every day you can repair better, and then you will keep your health as you age. And the reason why I'm talking about all of this is to kind of bring home a message that it's easy to miss because you know when you get these huge paradigm shifts oftentimes they're right there in front of you and we miss them because we have not fully understood the depth of what they're bringing. And I think stem cell research is like this because everything that I have talked to you about that is going to be in five, ten years from now, well it's already here. Genes has been developed product for the past 13 years that tap into this new paradigm, which is your own stem cells. You now have the ability with Revita Blue to release stem cells. You can put more stem cells every time you take one sachet of Revita Blue. You will put you will put four to six million new stem cells in circulation. Do this every day of your month, and at the end of the month, you will have received you will have released between 100 to 180 million of your own stem cells. Do this for a few months, this is huge. More stem cells in circulation means that every day you can repair better so you can keep the health that you have. When stem cells are released, they need to be able to identify which tissue to go into. Reserve will help you do that. CUNY will help stem cells do that. Nobody out there has this combination of product to support stem cells like you can do with these products. When stem cells are released, in order to protect them over time, you have Finity that protects the telomeres. You've got a line of product that nobody has that out there. You're already tapping today in basically what will be the medicine of tomorrow based on stem cells. This is huge. Do you realize you are pioneers? You are pioneers in the field of stem cells. You will look back at this in five, 10 years, and you will realize that you really, you open the new path in the world, not necessarily in science, but in the world, in the marketplace out there, you are educating people about what their stem cells are, what they're doing in the body, and how they can support them. And by doing so, you, you improve their health. This is huge. So I'll just finish to talk a little bit about some of the research that I'm working on uh, because as these court cases have been ended, it's really opening the field of research for anybody working in, in stem cells. So we have given plant extract that supports the release of stem cells like Revita Blue uh, in a study that we do in Madrid and in Florida uh, in congestive heart failure. So people who basically qualify for stable congestive heart failure. You, you know who they are. The people that would walk, for example, one flight of stairs, and at the top they need to stop and catch their breath. They cannot walk more than a block or two, they have to stop and catch their breath. And every single one of those individuals in the study, after three to six months, have improved by about 19% ejection fraction, which is the number of, the amount of blood pumped with every heartbeat, which basically made them normal. So six months later, they are normal individuals of their age. This is huge. In medicine, if you increase ejection fraction by 10%, it is a success. Releasing your own stem cells have brought results of about an average of 19, 20%. This is huge. We're starting another project with Parkinson. We were, we're adding preliminary results that are similar. We're starting another study in France on problems of digestive system colitis, Crohn's, bowel, ir irritable bowel disease, those kinds of things. Because anytime you have an acute episode, that means that locally, your gut has reached stem cell exhaustion. It's out of stem cells, it can no longer repair, that's when the problem really flares. If you put more stem cells in circulation, you can replenish these tissues and restore their ability to repair. You've not necessarily taken care of the problem, but at least it gives you a break to try to find really what's the source of the problem. So that's another project that we're starting in, in, in Paris. 
So all of this to basically tell you, again, I've said it before, but I think I, I just want to drive on that message. Stem cells is literally, truly, no doubt in my mind, the medicine of the future, but it's the medicine of the future already present today, available for those who know about it, you know about it, and you have great product to leverage your stem cells. So use them. Thank you.